I don't need to tell you about how riveting watching competitive Smash Ultimate events are. If you watch this channel, you are definitely a person of culture. <laughs> Jokes aside, all of you guys are people of culture. The fact is, almost anyone can enter any event and go on the run of their lives if they're playing hot, and that's what makes for some awesome stories. Players who are able to do this and take big upsets off players at majors or win larger regionals seemingly out of nowhere are often referred to as hidden bosses. So in this video, we're gonna be highlighting a bunch of these hidden bosses so that the next time you're watching a major, you can say, hey, I know who that is. And if you guys are looking for that extra push of motivation that you need to become a hidden boss yourself, then check out ProGuides.com using the description link below. Find yourself a pro coach right now. But with all that out of the way, let's start by talking about Biddy, a young Link main who hails from one of the strongest ultimate regions in the world, New Jersey. To just refresh your memory on how stacked Jersey is, let's read down the latest PR. Nairo, Tweak, Rivers, Leon, Jackal, Wishes, and sitting there at seventh place behind these Titans is none other than Biddy. And looking down at his results in Ultimate so far, he's really got the look of a quintessential hidden boss right on the edge of making a breakthrough. He's already taking wins at locals over some of the best players in Tri-State like Leon, Wishes, Juice, and Bonk. And at some majors, he's been missing top 64 by just one or two sets, 97th at Frostbite and Momicon, and 65th at Evo, Glitch 7, and Tri-State Showdown. Just seeing how often Biddy is willing to go out to these larger events shows a tremendous drive for improvement, which should help sell you on the Young Link main if somehow you weren't already sold. This isn't to say that Biddy hasn't had some great events already. His most notable would easily have been the Player's Ball in late November, where his Young Link finished fourth, dropping sets to DeBuzz and Venia, but not before picking up set wins over Roxas, Suarez, and Jewel. And top 64 isn't completely unknown to him as he started off 2019 with a 49th finish all the way back at Glitch 6, losing to 8-Bit Man and MVD while beating Pinkfresh's ZSS. With going to all these events and getting to play weekly against some of the best in the world, it's only a matter of time before we see Biddy tear through a bracket, especially with these recent Young Link buffs. And with that, we jump into one of the strongest regions on the East Coast to SoCal, one of the strongest regions on the West Coast, with the Sonic and Greninja main, Phoenix. Although Phoenix is involved enough in the scene to be a panelist for both the SoCal PR rankings, he hasn't appeared on a single one himself in the game's life cycle, which makes him much more of a hidden kind of boss than Biddy. We spoke to Phoenix about this, and that it mainly comes down to him not being active enough in the local scene, only having the chance to show up at one or two SoCal locals each season. He continued by saying that this was the case for him in Smash 4 as well, with the players in the region knowing that he was a threat but not being able to back that up. But he was eventually PR'd in that game. He does go to majors on his home turf, and he's placed pretty damn well every single time, which does a lot to back up this sentiment that he's much better than your average non-PR'd player. 65th at Congo Saga, and 49th at SoCal Chronicles and 2GG Prime Saga, being the most notable examples. Seeing as we don't really have much data for Phoenix, we wanted to focus our questions for him on his gameplay, namely how he decides between Sonic or Greninja in a particular set. He first stated the obvious reason for being a dual main in the game with so many characters. Well, it's because certain matchups are better for one than the other, and the pair together help cover all the bases. Phoenix did follow this up by saying, though, that if he's going into a set blind, he'll elect to go with Greninja for the first game because he thinks the frog has a better matchup spread than Sonic. Sonic does, and he performs better on Pokemon Stadium 2. In the next month or so, we won't unfortunately be able to see Phoenix at any big events coming up, as he does say that he isn't planning on attending anything in the immediate future. The next event Phoenix is registered for is 2GG Final Saga in late March. So with how well they've done at the past 2GG events, you should expect another 49th or better from the Hedgehog and Frog Duel main that weekend. We then head over to the center of the states to talk about one of the best Zero Suit mains in the world, as well as one of the best players in Colorado, and that's going to be none other than Shu. Shu has stayed true to ZSS since the Smash 4 days, where he was also considered one of the best with that character and the best in his region. It might be a little bit unfair to refer to the member of the Armada organization as truly hidden, as he's already proven he can punch far above that weight class, 
having upset Meister at Genesis 6 and Captain L at 2GG Prime Saga. He's yet to make that real big run that puts him on the map in Smash Ultimate yet, but he's gotten close. At the previously mentioned 2GG, he finished 33rd, losing to Samsora on Winner's Side, and just barely failed closing out a Game 5 set against Texas Fox main Mega Fox. He also recently got 33rd at Glitch 8 without picking a huge upset and losing to two well-known top players, Leon and Ryuga. For our next player, we head down into South America to talk about Chile's third best player, Firehow, the Snake and Diddy Kong dual main. His location unfortunately forces him to remain a hidden boss just for the fact that he would have to undertake a huge cost to fly out to other major events. But we do have one data point for him, and that's thanks to the compendium for 2GG Congo Saga, where Firehow snuck in as the number one voted Diddy main by a singular vote. But with all the pressure of having to live up to being the choice to represent Diddy Kong and his entire Entire country at the major, Firehouse stayed calm to bring a 49th place finish back with him to Chile. This performance had him cleanly beating recently ranked 39th best in the world, Louis Money, 2-0, before getting knocked down into losers by T, and then barely missing out on bringing another huge win back home in a Game 5 loss against Locus. It's sad to say that the odds that we'll see Firehow at another major anytime soon is fairly low, but when the time comes for him, Frito's Game & Watch or Harlonga's Wario to appear on the big stage again, you know the Chileans will be returning home with some more PGR wins. Second to last, we've got the San Jose Bowser main King Koopa, who has all but shed his cocoon of hidden boss status already in 2020, with his 17th place finish recently at Genesis 7, where he insanely overperformed his 76th seed. This run included a huge upset over 23rd best in the world Cosmos, as well as the talented Aeon and Myron's Olimar. Beyond this, there's really not much to say about NorCal 6 best player. We don't have any indication on which major bracket he'll be terrorizing just next, but with his frequent activity at the local level and his prime location for only having to travel a short distance for big events, it's bound to be soon. But if King Koopa is able to continue to perform like this at major events in the next couple of months, you shouldn't be surprised to see a king seated in the next PGRU. We finish off our highlight video of hidden bosses with a quick shout out to Bonkai, a New York native and zero suit main that now resides in Philly, who sits at eighth on their latest PR. They've started off their 2020 season of Ultimate incredible with the two majors they've attended. First, at Let's Make Big Moves, Bankai finished 25th. The ZSS fought tooth and nail for this placing by having to win four straight sets on the loser side after being sent down there early in bracket by losing to Daybreak's Wolf. The other outstanding placement Bankai already has in 2020 was at Glitch 8, where he finished 17th at the incredibly stacked event. His two losses came against Tweak and Goblin, both PGRU-ranked players, and although he didn't pick up any PGRU wins, he beat some notable names to earn his 17th, like JW and John Numbers. So then the obvious big question moving forward is, will Bankai be able to keep this streak up or even improve on his 17th placement at the next major? And that about does it for this video. Let us know down in the comments below which one of these hidden bosses you expect to tear up the bracket at a major. Also, let us know what other upcoming talent we should keep our eyes out for so that we can potentially shout them out the next time we talk about hidden bosses on this channel. And as always, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on so you don't miss any competitive content for the ultimate scene. Once again, it's been Kristoff. Thank you so much for watching the video and good luck in your next few games.